In this video, I'm going to discuss Triffin's Dilemma or Triffin's Paradox, as it's sometime called. And I came across this oh, over the past couple of years, uh, about the same time I started coming across uh, Brent Johnson's Milkshake Theory. And this Triffin's Paradox kept coming up as I started to research it. Um, and there are aren't many video, good videos out about this, but there is one very good video, and it's not this one, <laughs> but uh, I, I it's from George Gammon, and it's about a 30-minute video, so I thought maybe what I would do is put together something a little bit shorter, but kind of hits the highlights of things that uh, George Gammon uh, talks about. And one of the things I'll do for this particular video, uh, one, is I'll put George a uh, link to George Gammon's um, video that he put together uh, in the description, but also I'll put in chapters so you can kind of walk your way through it. Um, and I think it's something that people should be familiar with. Uh, it's kind of playing out right now. And uh, I think it fits very well into uh, Brent Johnson's milkshake theory. So here, first of all, you've got to start with a little bit of a background uh, on uh kind of money in the U.S. or currency in the U.S. And uh, before I get into Robert uh, Triffin's dilemma, um, and I'll explain who he is also, but after, kind of uh, after World War II, the U.S. was the manufacturer of about 50% of the world's goods. And that's an incredible <laughs> That's an incre incredible uh, number. Now, it helped ma manufacture a lot of the equipment needed during World War II, so they were already in production. Uh, the, you know, Europe relied on uh, the U.S. in order to manufacture these, um, you know, military goods. And uh, so they had, you know, they acu the U.S. accumulated a lot of gold during that time period. Because uh, that's how the, the Europe would pay them. They pay them in gold. And then in 1944, um, the Britain Woods got together and, you know, the U.S. had most of the, the gold. So, you know, the, the, the uh, person with the gold makes the rules or the country with the gold in this case <laughs> makes the rules. Um, and uh, so... The U.S. dollar became the reserve currency for the world because we're manufacturing everything. We had all the gold. And uh, one of the things that back when in the Britain Woods Agreement was that the U.S. dollar was backed by gold. And so post-World War II, um, you know, manufacturing in the U.S. began to decline. Now, there's a combination of reasons for it, uh, you know. Quality goods, if we go back to the Japanese industrial miracle, uh, that was a part of it. And uh, it was the recovery of Europe at the same time. But also what played a role in this, too, is the, um, the U.S. being the reserve currency, what they would export is, is their money. And uh, so other, other countries began to manufacture um, the goods that, uh, were needed around the world and especially the U.S. because in order to grow, you had to have the the dollar, um, which was the medium of exchange basically for for the globe. And but what began to happen, and I believe France was one of the first ones, is the these countries they're manufacturing things and the U.S. was buying them um, started asking for their gold in exchange for the dollars because the dollar was backed by gold. And in 1971, uh, Richard Nixon decoupled uh, gold from the dollar. So, uh, you know, the world now is relying on fiat currency. And this really uh, kind of sets up um, what Robert Triffin, who is an economist uh, in the U.S., um, but he was from Belgium, in 1960, presented to Congress that, you know, the country with reserve currency has to export these U.S. dollars, which you can tell from the history, that's kind of what, what happened. Uh, otherwise, that uh, global growth uh, would slow. And so 
you know, the U.S. would then export their money, the dollar, and the manufacturing base in the U.S. started to deteriorate. And I'm not sure deteriorate, but certainly um, started to, to slow down. And so we would exchange the U.S. dollar for these goods. And uh, what, hap- what Robert Triffin was uh, sharing was that the reserve currency would begin to lose uh, its, its status uh, as uh, the U.S. no longer won, held all the gold. But also, more importantly, at least in my mind, is that they weren't manufacturing 50% of the world's goods anymore. And so what happened from 1971 on, especially, is trade deficits. Well, even, it's happened before then, but uh, really started to uh, get into trade deficits after 1971. Um, as uh, Nixon decoupled the gold from the dollar. And, you know, the trade deficits went up in the U.S., meaning our, the, the amount of manufacturing goods we relied on other countries, and consumer spending went up, and what this led to was money printing. So um, consumer and corporate debt would come to an all-time high and then, you know, you know, where manufacturing jobs here in the U.S. made up about 50, 40 percent of employment, you know, and now that number is eight and a half percent. And so we've become or uh, this consumer uh, of goods, and that represents about 70 percent of our GDP. And, but all of these goods are coming from other, other uh, nations. And the problem with this is that interest rates go higher. And then, uh, you know, because of the large deficits that were running in the printing of the money, and, you know, interest rates now can't go too high because we have too much debt. And the more that in our current scenario that the Fed increases the, the amount of money that that is in essence um, made then and it's not really printing per se but it's certainly um, allowing the government to spend more money uh, and funding that through deficits Um, but you know we can't continue to print money now because it creates the inflation that we're seeing today and so Robert Triffin's uh, dilemma, you know, associated with these large deficits associated in the demand for dollars uh, is kind of is played out. (laughs) And, and it really leads to Brent Johnson, to me, takes it a step further in that now the milkshake theory uh, is basically saying, okay, we're getting now to the point where we're raising interest rates because we can to a certain point. And other countries can't because they need the, the, the U.S. dollar. And uh, so we're sucking the liquidity out of all of these other countries. Um, and, you know, because we went off the gold standard, you know, this is all fiat. It's all, you know, fiat currency is not backed by anything. There's nothing to hold it stable. And, and any reserve currency is going to have a problem because all countries are going to try and manipulate it, uh, no matter what, um, to, to, to bend in their favor. We've just really taken advantage of it to the point where, um, things are starting to break. And, um, you know, in in George Gammon's video, he talks about, you know, well, why don't we just bring manufacturing back to the U S well, it's not that easy when, you know, we've had it good for a long period of time when you have a good, you know, Oh, well, we need to save the environment and we need to regulate things. And, you know, look at California. I mean, you can't get anything uh, there. I mean, the regulations are are incredible and we've got lots of regulations. So just bringing manufacturing back uh, can be problematic. You know, uh, even uh, W. Edwards Deming talked about, um, you know, the ability to sue uh, companies for making products and, uh you know, that that's a problem. 
but it's gotten much bigger than that. If that was the only problem, that probably wouldn't be too bad, although it's bad. Um, so anyway, just kind of seeing where thing, things have gone because we've lived at this high artificial um, wealth that we have accumulated in this nation through material things, we now have got a huge problem uh, and Triff, Robert Triffin uh, is going to turn out to be pretty correct, it looks like, in, you know, the problems associated with, you know, being the reserve currency. So anyway, I, that's the short version of it. Uh, I'm not sure how much short it is. I'm guessing it probably be half the time as George Gammon's. But take your time. If you want to learn more, uh, watch George Gammon's video. It, it, it's very good. Um, and uh, remember, there is always a better way.